coming to you from the fabulous Oracle Technology Network Multimedia Center, high atop Oracle headquarters in Redwood Shores, California. I'm Bob Rubart, and this is an OTN TechCast. If you want to build something, you need the right tools. If you want to develop software, you need a development framework. That's exactly what we're going to talk about in this program. And as luck would have it, my guest is someone who knows a lot about that stuff. Shai Schmelzer, welcome. Thank you, Bob. Let's start off by having you tell us about what you do for Oracle. What's right, your role? So I'm part of the development group that actually builds the product that our developers and our customers use to build their own products and their own applications. So we're developing the IDs, so that would be JDeveloper, Eclipse, NetBeans. We develop the framework, which would be ADF, MAF, JET, and we're also developing a bunch of cloud-based tools and frameworks uh, for people to start development in the cloud environment. All right, now you just mentioned, you rattled off a bunch of names here. Mm -hmm. First off, Let's start with the initials. So right. tell me what those initials mean. Yeah, so ADF, um, it's the application development framework. That's the framework that Oracle uses to build our Java-based applications. Um, all our SaaS applications, for example, Fusion applications, things like that have been built with ADF. Um, MAF, it's the mobile application framework. And as the name suggests, it's used to build mobile application that actually runs on mobile devices. So uh, they are device residents, um, and they just work on iOS, Android, and soon on Windows uh, devices. And then JET is the newer guy. Uh, JET is the JavaScript extension toolkit. And that's basically our framework for developers who want to build JavaScript-based user interfaces. Now, JET's the newest of the bunch, as you mentioned. Let's dig a little deeper into that one. What's the background on JET? So, um, as technology evolved um, and the move to the cloud kind of emphasized this, um, in the cloud, there's a lot of focus on browser-based interfaces and creating very responsive user interfaces and also user interfaces that scale to serve a lot of people in a new architecture. And as we were building our cloud products um, that in many cases don't actually connect to a database at the back end, but actually do a lot of other stuff, we started to adopt this JavaScript on the client approach, connecting to a variety of things in the back end using REST interfaces, standard interfaces. And as we started using this internally to build our new products, uh, we realized there were parts that were missing from the overall JavaScript ecosystem. And we started to build little frameworks or little libraries that solved a lot of those. Um, and it covered aspects from how do you create a user interfaces that support accessibility or that uh, supports internationalization to how do you efficiently talk with the backend, um, talk with variety of backends, uh, do two-way binding. And as we built this, um, basically for our own developers' usage, uh, we saw more and more adoption in-house. And at some point we got um, our customers to ask us, basically, do you have anything to offer? And we had something, but it was only internal. We were only using it internally. And as the request grew, we figured out, hey, our customers would probably can benefit from this. We built some specific capabilities that would make it an ideal solution for an Oracle environment, like having the same look and feel, what we call the Oracle Alta look and feel, as the rest of the Oracle solution. And what we did basically at Open World this year is we released it to our customers so they can actually use it as well. And our next step would basically be to take this, open source it, so anyone in the JavaScript community can use it. Okay. If someone comes up to you and says, what development framework should I use? Right. How do you answer? What's your response? So as many responses inside Oracle, it starts with, it depends. And it really <laughs> does depend on a few aspects. One aspect is, what language would you like to develop with? Or which languages do you already know to develop with? Um, as Oracle, we have uh, support for a bunch of languages. Um, if you're a PLSQL developer, there are tools for you. If you're a Java developer, we would direct you in the direction of ADF. Uh, if you're a JavaScript developer, we'll direct you in the direction of JET. And if you want an on-device application, we'll direct you in the direction of MAF. So that's one way to distinct between things, which is basically which language are you more comfortable with, which is your forte, and we have a framework that allows you to be effective in that language. 
The other approach to this is to look at specific requirements uh, that usually dictates an architecture and then picking the framework based on the architecture. For example, um, if you're doing um, a lot of database connectivity and you want to manage transactions and you want integration with a bunch of uh, process flows and things like that and manage states um, and you are okay with a server-generated UI, then ADF is exactly up your stream. In some other situations, for example, if you're creating a client-facing website, um, for example, our cloud products in, in a lot of cases are like that. If you're expecting a lot of smaller interactions with your backend, not necessarily complex transaction across multiple systems, and you want a more responsive, more client-side focused architecture, Jet would be the way to go. And the nice thing about MAF is that to some degree it brings in the ability to develop with the Java approach if you want to, but in MAF you can also use JavaScript and JET. Where does the developer cloud service fit into this picture? Right, so as we said, there's a lot of languages and frameworks you can use, but no matter which language you're using, you're going to have some things that are common to all the development Teams. It's things like we need to track our issues and tasks and features and bugs that we need to do. There's issues like version managing your code, issues like how do I actually take my code and automate the process of packaging it, testing it, deploying it, and basically the dev part of the DevOps cycle. And developer cloud service basically takes care of that. It gives you a platform hosted in the cloud where you can um, manage your source, the full life cycle of your source. You can manage your teamwork in terms of uh, tracking requirements, prioritizing items, planning your work, your sprints, your agile development, all the way to actually packaging and deploying the application at the end of the day. And this is regardless of what language you're using, regardless of which tools you're using. Um, the environment is in the cloud. It's very easy to communicate from all the ideas that we provide or command line. You just upload your code to the cloud and you have uh, tools to collaborate and improve your teamwork when you're developing application. I've seen references to a term citizen developer. Right. What's that all about? So citizen developers is the way that my job is going to be obsolete to some degree. <laughs> um, I talked about all the tools we're building for developers and the notion of a citizen developer is a um, new tooling that will actually allow non-professional developers to build their own applications. As, again, as computer evolves, as software evolves, it becomes easier and easier for people to actually be self-sufficient. Um, a lot of the uh, end users today are people who actually took one or two programming courses in university. Um, as an example, my kids are in elementary school right now and they are practicing development as part of their regular curriculum. So the expectation is that as this generation uh, becomes part of the workforce, they would want to be self-sufficient. Um, they would still need IT to build the bigger applications, but the smaller application, the smaller requirements that they need, the ad hoc things that can make their day-to-day -day, um, job easier, can be addressed and will be addressed by those business users on their own. And that's the citizen developer. And actually, one thing that our group does as well is working on the next generation of tooling inside Oracle that actually targets exactly those guys and girls. Does, it, does this concept of the citizen developer and, and the idea that it's easier to develop applications now for these people, does it change the qualifications then? I mean, you talked about kids now learning to develop yeah. software. Uh, you know, 10 years down the line, mm -hmm. what happens? Will What's the, the career path now to get into software development? Right, so I think there would always be a distinction between the so-called professional developers who would be building the more complex applications. And it can be complex in terms of what is the backend that you're accessing and how you integrate various pieces and various sources of information. And it can be complex in terms of what you want to achieve in the user interface. And those things, I think, would always require a professional developer. Um, as always, the, there's progression in, the, in that space as well in terms of the ease of use and our framework came to do those type of simplification. 
But in parallel, we do see this growth of, um, hey, I can do it on my own uh, type of approach. And I think in some cases, the lines are going to be very blurry about who's doing what. And in a lot of cases, you probably are going to see even better cooperation between the IT guy and the business guy, where the business guy might have an idea for something he wants to do. He can quickly prototype this with the tools for the citizen developer and then bring in the professional developer to tie in the what they call the 20% that actually make the application unique and more capable. So one thing that we are seeing with the citizen developer uh, tooling is this uh, more tight uh, collaboration between the IT department that used to be in one area of the organization and the business users who were in another area and now they are actually talking to each other which is nice. So that this evolution in these development tools and, and in, in this concept of citizen developer is actually closing that that traditional gap between IT and the right. business side. It's closing the gap, it's blurring the line between where IT stops and business starts and it brings them together into one goal of building applications that actually have business impact as fast as possible. So what is Oracle doing for citizen developers? Right, so right now we're working on several tools specifically in my area, which is tools for, again, developers of applications. We are working on a product called the Application Builder Cloud Service, and that's actually um, a very easy to use cloud-based interface where business users can go over and build their own little applications, um, two unique aspects there. One aspect is that as you build the application, everything is driven from the user interface. You're working in a, the user interface very visually, design your page, you get a live view of how the page behaves, click and see the interaction while you're building it. Um, and the other aspect is integration with the Oracle uh, SaaS systems. So it's very easy to take uh, data from Oracle applications and bring it and merge it together with your own private data that you want to build in this system. So it makes an ideal tool for people who want to extend and enrich uh, existing Oracle SaaS application as well, for pe as well as for people who just want to build their own little applications uh, for use for other situation. And the second tool that we have is called the Mobile uh, Application Accelerator. We call it Max for short because it's a very complex name <laughs> to say. Um, and what Max does is basically allow a developer to build an on-device application. Um, it's very guided approach. You go into the tool, visually you pick up templates, components for your page, a bunch of services that bring you data or mobile capabilities that you can just again drag and drop into the application that you're building. At the end of the day, you get a QR code, you scan it, and you get the application downloaded onto your device, iOS, Android, or other operating systems and you have an application that talks to your enterprise backend that you built on your own. Um, those two tools are great to demo because it's very easy for people to see the value and how they speed up development, whether you're a developer or a citizen developer. Given your role, your, and you mentioned, you alluded to this earlier in, with a reference to Oracle Open World, uh, you're you're down in the trenches with the people doing the development. Right. Can you talk a bit about the the role of the community in the product development process? Right. Um, for developers, community is key. Um, knowledge today is not something that you have everything in your head. The knowledge is basically what the internet knows. Um, the minute that you have a problem or you run into a challenge, the first thing that you do is you go and you search on the internet with the specific terms and you look for a solution. And if you have a good community around your tools, uh, you'll find the solution because someone else already did this. And if you're a good member of the community and you didn't find a solution and you then went and solved the problem or a challenge, you'll post this. And this is being a, a good member of the community, which is a, another thing that is very important. The community, there's always this um, gap between, again, like the 90% who are lurking in the community and the 10% who are actually very active. And I think developers more and more realize that being active in the community is something that can actually promote themselves um, in terms of career-wise. It gives them more visibility, 
when employers today look at uh, one of them, like a, a potential candidate, they automatically go and they Google them and they look at have they actually published anything? Are there any blogs that they wrote? Was he involved in any open source project? Was he answering questions on OTN or on Stack Overflow or a bunch of other community sites? And again, in the development space, this is key to the success of you as a developer, being part of the community, sharing the knowledge and collaborating with other peers. And I think it makes it more fun as well. And I think that's a great note on which to end this conversation. So Shai, thanks for sharing your insight. Thank you. If you'd like to learn more about development frameworks and join the conversation about ADF, MAF, JET, and other technologies, please visit community.oracle.com and look for the Development Tools section. For the Oracle Technology Network, I'm Bob Rubart. Thanks for watching.